minorities drive history. Now, I'm not talking about ethnic minorities. I'm not talking about racial minorities. I'm talking about minorities in terms of a percentage, less than 50% of a population. Those are the people who drive history. Those are the people who make history. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. For 17 years, I taught a course on the U.S. and the Middle East. And one of the things I learned in that course was that most students, and I would conclude most Americans, believe that majorities drive history. Majorities are a driving force in the making of history. That's simply not true. What I would inevitably hear from my students would be talking about jihadism, terrorism, whatever you want to call it. And it would always be several students who would say, but isn't it true that, you know, if you look at Muslims around the world as a whole, the vast majority of them do not believe in terrorism, do not support terrorism, do not support jihadism. And the obvious answer to that is, yes, that's true. But that's not the problem. And the assumption behind that question, that remark, is that if something is in a majority, you don't need to worry about it. That's not true. There are, after all, a billion Muslims in the world. They know from different studies, and they all vary a little bit. From country to country, it runs from around 2% to about 12%. So on average, you might say 7%, 6%, somewhere around there. That's the percentage of Muslims around the world who believe in the concept of you know, jihad, who believe it's all right to kill uh, cartoonists, Charlie Hebdo, uh, to plow planes into the Twin Towers, stuff like that. But you know, if you take 6 or 7% of a billion people, you're looking at 60 to 70 million people. That's a hell of a lot of people. The entire Nazi German army in World War II was around 10 million people at its height, maybe close to 11. You're talking 60 to 70 million people. That's a lot of potential terrorists. And that also misses the even larger point. But just because these people are minority, forget their sheer numbers, doesn't mean they can't get anything done and they don't pose a threat. I mentioned the German army in the last segment, roughly around 10 million. But look at Germany, look at Nazi Germany in the 30s and into the, to, till 1945. Most Germans were not Nazis. If you look at Hitler's power at its height in the summer of 1940, this is after he's taken over Austria, bloodless, Czechoslovakia, bloodless, conquered Poland, Denmark, Norway, Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, and overrun France in six weeks. And he's at the height of his powers. He comes back from his tour of Paris to Berlin, and there's people or just loads of people on the streets all cheering and, you know, Heil Hitler and all that stuff. He's at the height of its powers, the height of his power and the power of Nazi Germany. And at that point, at the high point of Hitler's power, of German power, around 11% of Germans belonged to the Nazi party. That's despite all the good stuff that's happening, all the victories, all the triumphs despite all the advantages that accrue to you as a party member with regard to employment, protection, stuff like that, 89% of Germans never joined the Nazi party. The Nazis in Germany represented about 11% of the population. 89% did not join, despite the success, despite the advantages. So very, the Nazis were a distinct minority within Germany. 11%, a little over 10%, 
Ergo, they pose no threat to anybody. Should the Jews in 1938 said, yeah, we don't need to worry about Hitler. You know, uh, less than 11% of Germans belong to the party, his party. They're a distinct minority. What's there to worry about? People around Europe and the Americas, and Roosevelt, we don't need to worry about Hitler. His party, they're, you know, a distinct minority of Germans. The overwhelming majority of Germans don't think like Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party. That would have been true. But it didn't matter because they weren't running Germany. You know, who was running Germany? Hitler, the Nazis. They were a minority, but they were organized, they were committed, and they were vicious. And they knew how to get and use power. And that's what set the world alight. That's what killed not just the, the Jews. You know, 24 million Russians died. 6 million Germans died. You know, people were dying all over the place. They set the planet alight. And they were a minority. Minorities drive history. Think about the American Revolution. You had the patriots, the rebels. How many of them were there? I mean, I think probably a lot of Americans think the majority of people supported the Patriot cause and wanted independence from Great Britain. That's simply not true. John Adams estimated it was a third and a third and a third. A third of the people supported the Patriot cause, a third of the people were Tories, supported the British, and a third of the people could care less. Now, nobody was doing polling. We don't really know for sure. Maybe it was a little more than a third. Maybe it was 40%. Maybe it was a little less than a third. Maybe it was only 30%. But somewhere in that range, people supported the Patriot cause. The Patriots were a minority. Should King George III sitting over there in London have said, you know, they're less than 50% of the people. They're not a majority. We've got nothing to worry about. American colonies will never break away. They'll never secure their independence. No. History is driven by minorities. French Revolution, Jacobins, percentages, single digits. The vast majority of people in France were not Jacobins. Does that mean at the time of the terror there was nothing to worry about? Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette had no fear. They should have no fear of being beheaded because these people are a distinct minority. The overwhelming majority, more than 90% of the French people do not support the Jacobins. Nothing to worry about here. Move along. Nothing to see here. That's how you lose your head. History is driven by minorities. Bolshevik Revolution, October 1917, November by our current calendar. Russia, 1917, was a country of what Russians would have called 170 million souls. That's how they referred to the large numbers of people, souls. The Bolsheviks, there may have been 50,000 Bolsheviks around Russia, but they were spread all over the place. They were in the army, they were in Siberia, they were here, they were there. There may have been 2,500 Bolsheviks in Petrograd at the time of the actual revolution, the coup, the October Revolution. Estimates are probably active Bolsheviks took part in that may have been as low as 500. So whether it's 500 or 2,500, or even 25,000, if you take the whole number, took over a country of 170 million people. I don't even, I can't even do that percentage in my head. But you know, it's tiny. It's less than 1%. Should someone have said, you know, Lenin, you know, he's got less than 1% of the people behind him. What threat could he possibly pose? How could he take over a country of 170 million people? You know, the whole thing with Bolshevik, Bolshevik in, in Russian means basically majority, the bigger group, as opposed to the Mensheviks, who were the lesser group. The reality was the Bolsheviks among Russian social democrats, which is what they called themselves, 
were actually the minority. They got the term Bolsheviks because they they pulled a procedural stunt at one of their congresses and the Jewish Bund walked out. So they had a temporary majority and they started passing their stuff through and they started calling themselves the Bolsheviks, the majority, as opposed to the Mensheviks, the minority. The reality was there were more Mensheviks than the Bolsheviks. So they weren't even the majority within the Russian Social Democratic Party. It was all propaganda. It was all posturing. And they were less than 1% of the people of Russia and they took it over because they were dedicated, they were committed, they were organized, they were willing to risk their lives. And because of that, they changed history. They took over a country of 170 million people because minorities drive history. As we move forward in this country, we need to keep this fact in mind. Minorities drive history. I'm not talking just about the war on terror, or global war on terror, overseas contingency operations, whatever, whatever crap you want to call it, jihadism. I'm talking about what's going to happen here. Don't expect whatever's coming in this country, and I'm not making any predictions about anything, I don't know. But whatever is going to happen in this country, don't conclude, don't assume that it's going to be driven by a majority. Don't assume that because you're most likely to be wrong. As I said, if you look at history, especially modern history, history's driven by minorities. History's driven by the people, despite their numbers, who are dedicated, committed, and willing to risk what they have to get their way. That was why the Patriots won in 76 to 83, 1776 to 1783. I can't assume that people understand what century people, things happen in. Minorities drive history. And, and so whatever you see happening, whether it's on the right or the left or in the center, don't think that as long as it's not a majority, there's nothing to fear. Because you'll be wrong. It's one of the reasons a lot of people didn't fear the Nazis, didn't take Hitler seriously. People didn't take Jacobin seriously. People didn't take Bolsheviks seriously. People didn't take jihadists seriously until 9-11. That's why, you know, Clinton administration, Bush, even Reagan, back to Nixon, didn't take these types of people seriously because they're a distinct minority. What can they possibly do? We found out on 9-11. The British found out in 1783. Louis found out as his head fell into the basket. The Russians found out when Lenin and the Bolsheviks seized power. Minorities drive history. Don't forget that. Got something out of this video? Give it a thumbs up. Hit comment. Leave a comment. Hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. Share with your friends. Subscribe to the channel. And until next time, keep fighting.